What if you take Pokemon Crystal and add new Pokemon from the latest generation, as well as you give older Pokemon new regional forms with new types? Well then, you would have Pokemon Serene Crystal, an amazing Pokemon game that changes everything you know about the original Crystal. And today, I plan to complete the game while doing a hardcore Nuzlocke. I would also like to shout out the creator, Pinatella XO, for making this, as well as the amazing sprites in this game. So now, with that all being said, I have the option of three new starter Pokemon, Cyndaquil the Ice type Pokemon, Totodile the Ground type Pokemon, and finally Chikorita the Bug type Pokemon. I go with Cyndaquil mainly because Ice types are a bit cracked in this game, but also because he's cute. I mean look at him. So now on to Route 1, and because I don't have any Pokeballs I can't capture anything yet, which kinda blows, but the shiny odds in this game are raised, so I'll probably find one eventually. After getting the mysterious egg from the guy which the series is named after, I run into my rival and I start my first battle. The unknown opponent sends out Chikorita, and from there it's a pretty easy first battle. I use Leer to lower its defense and then I spam Tackle until I win. I then go back to the lab and I learn that my rival's name is actually Rival, as well as I finally get Pokeballs, so now my challenge can officially begin. The first Pokemon I come across is this Pidgey on Route 29. Then on Route 46 I find a new regional type in this game, a dark type Teddy Ursa. Finally in the Bellsprout Tower I find a Ghastly, and with these new additions to the team, I face the top trainer of the Bellsprout Tower, Sage Lee. And just like the name of the tower suggests, he leads with a Bellsprout. And by this time, Cyndaquil's already learned Powder Snow, so with two of those, Bellsprout goes down. Then he sends out Natu, but not just any Natu, this one is now Rock and Psychic type, so I use Ghastly to take it out with a few licks. And then he sends out another Bellsprout, and you know, second verse same as the first, and for defeating him, I get my own regional Natu. But because I already captured a Pokemon, on here I can't use it without breaking the rules of the Nuzlocke. So now on to the first gym, which is moved to the top of Route 46, and the only way to get through there is through the Dark Cave, where I also happen to find my next teammate, a shiny Geodude, and with my new shiny teammate I take on the first gym. Now with this first gym two things are different from the original. The first is that it's no longer a flying type gym, it's a fairy type gym, and secondly Faulkner isn't the leader, Bridget from Guilty Gear is. I don't know, I'm not very good at fighting games. Anyway, she sends out a shiny snubble, so I send out my own shiny as well. But after two draining kisses, I swap into Cyndaquil and spam Powder Snow. Then she sends out a shiny Togepi, and yeah, I just spam Powder Snow until it went down as well. Then she sends out her Meryl, so I try a different tactic. I use Ghastly to put it to sleep with Hypnosis, and then I spam the Lick until I won. A very brain off first gym, but hey, I got the Fey Badge, and now my Cyndaquil evolved into Quillava, which is just in time for me to stop Team Rocket from cutting off Slowpoke Tails. The the Rocket Grunt starts off with coughing, and then he poisons my Teddy Ursa so I swap into my own poison type Pokemon and take it out. Then he sends out a Gumi. So to all my Gumi fans out there, yes he's in the game, and I also take it out with Quilava and I finish his Slowpoke off with Ghastly. So now I can get special Pokeballs from Kurt, which I never use by the way. So now onto the second gym leader Bugsy. They lead with Ariados, and now here's where Pidgey shines. Mainly because I just spam Peck until it faints. Then Bugsy sends out Ledian, and it lands a Comic Punch bringing Pidgey down to 2 HP. So I used my head and went for Quick Attack to outspeed, but it sadly didn't kill. But it really didn't matter matter because Ledian missed his next Comet Punch anyway. Finally, Bugsy's Scyther was the only thing left standing, and it got one-shotted with a rock throw from Geodude, and with them defeated, I got the Hive Badge and I faced my rival, Rival again. His Ghastly gets pecked to death by Pidgey, even though Ghastly's already dead because it's a ghost. I don't know. Anyway, Quilava gives his bat frostbite, then I finish the fight by throwing a couple rocks at his bailey. Now in the Ilex Force, I catch the mascot of the series, the yellow bastard himself, Pikachu. Then before I go and face Whitney, I head to Route 35 and my luck strikes again because my encounter for this route was a perfect match for Whitney's normal types. Plus being in Goldenrod means I have access to the department store, which means I now have access to the evolution stone so I can now evolve Pikachu into Raichu. Whitney leads with a Neary, and I only have two words for you. Magnitude 10. Her next Pokemon was a Furret, and after landing two Karate Chops on her oversized rat, it was done for. Then her Clefairy comes out, so I sent out Raichu to take care of it with Quick Attacks, because my Electric type Pokemon doesn't have any Electric type attacks. But then Clefairy took itself out with Double Edge, so now it's on the Whitney's Ace. Miltank. I start off by putting it to sleep with Ghastly, then I follow it up with a Curse so that its HP will reduce with each turn. I then swap into Quillava, where of course Miltank 
tank wakes up and starts using rollout to increase its damage, but it misses after every turn, so the damage doesn't increase, and soon it falls due to Ghastly's curse, giving me the plane badge. So now onto the next gym, where I'm immediately kicked out, so I decide to check out what Pokemon are in Route 38, and I happen to find this little guy. I also find the legendary dogs. Cats? Guinea pigs? Anyway, they're not as important as my newly evolved Haunter and Graveler, but I can now face Morty because of them. Morty's first Pokemon was a Pumpkaboo, which Quilava made quick work of. Then Teddy Ursa licked his glaring Corsola that resulted in it getting paralyzed. Then it used Curse, halving its HP, so I followed it up with Beat Up for an easy knockout. Then everything fell apart when its Gengar came out. I swapped into Graveler to abuse its poison type weakness, because poison is weak to ground for some reason, but Morty's Gengar landed a Hypnosis, putting my Graveler to sleep. I decided it was too risky to keep Graveler in, so I swapped into Raichu to paralyze it. But after one Shadow Ball, I knew I had to swap out Raichu. Teddy Ursa was a Dark type, so I swapped him in to resist Gengar's Ghost type attacks. Everything was going fine until Morty used the Super Potion to heal Gengar back up. Then it happened. An unlucky Critical Shadow Ball landed, taking out Teddy Ursa, Mr. Fazbear himself. Quill Lava was fast enough to outspeed and take out Gengar, but now I had my first casualty in my Nuzlocke. And in order to fill the hole in my team, I brought in my freshly caught Squirtle, who's a psychic and flying type now. And after getting her to the level cap, she evolved into War Turtle. But that's not all because my Mankey evolved into Primate, and if you can believe it, Raichu evolved into a new evolution, Gorochu. I also decided to go back in the Goldenrod and gamble for better TMs, like Thunder, Blizzard, and Fire Blast. Now with that done, it was time to face the second new gym leader of this game, Got and their dark type Pokemon, which are all shiny by the way. The fight starts off with Primeape, landing a super effective submission on their Thievil, knocking it out in one hit. Then the same thing happens with her Bombardier. Gorichu lands a super effective Thunder, knocking it out in one hit. Primeape lands another super effective submission on Got's Arbok, but then gets paralyzed next turn by Glare. So I use Graveler to finish up the job. Now onto her Ace, Weavile, that lands Swag on Graveler that raises its attack, but in return gives him confusion. But even through the confusion and paralysis, Graveler lands a rock throw that's super effective against Weavile, knocking it out with one hit, and as a reward, I get the horse badge. So now on to face the next gym leader, Jasmine. And to start off, her Magneton uses Rain Dance, for whatever reason, I don't know. Anyway, it goes down to a submission from Primate. Then she sends out Skarmory. And the funny thing about this game is that Steel types are now weak against Electric. So do I really need to explain what happened? Jasmine then sent out Steelix, so I took advantage of the Rain Dance Magneton setup and used Surf with Gorichu because it can learn that for some reason. Next up was her Ampharos, and again, I only have two words to say, magnitude 10. Last up was her Scizor, which really wasn't a match for my primate that just landed a submission, and just like that, the mineral badge was mine. Now I have the chance to catch a new shiny teammate, and whoops, my uh my finger slipped. But hey, look who's moving up in the world. Faulkner leads with Togekiss, and I lead with Quilava, who lands a blizzard causing Togekiss to pop a golden berry. Then I follow up with an ice punch for the kill. Then he sends out Mantine, which really didn't put up much of a fight anyway. So now on the Gliscor, where a surf from Gorchu sadly didn't take it out, and it landed an earthquake. But my luck strikes again because Gorchu was left with 2 HP. And with one more surf, Gliscor was done for. Hell, I even got lucky lucky enough to land another thunder on Faulkner's Farfetch. Finally, my Graveler finishes things off with a single rock throw, knocking out his Honchkrow for the Zephyr badge. Also, Team Rocket takes over the radio tower, so me being a literal child in this game means it's my job to stop it. But in return, I get some new evolutions for my Pokemon. The first one to evolve was Primeape into Annihilate, accompanied by this beautiful sprite work. Next was my shiny Graveler who evolved into a shiny Golem. Then my Ice-type starter evolved into a fighting an ice type Typhlosion. Then finally, this game's regional form of War Turtle evolved into the regional form of Blastoids. Now it's time to face Giovanni. He starts off by sending out Scizor, which is weak to electric type attacks. So next was his Rhydon, which is weak to water type attacks. Then he sends out Houndoom. And to be fair, Houndoom does land a flamethrower before being completely obliterated by submission from Annihilate. He also had a Gyarados. Need I say more? Then finally, he sends out a Persian that absolutely 
absolutely gets annihilated by Annihilate. You would think for a mob boss he would have more of a diverse team, but I guess the 10 year old hasn't beaten that department as well. Now, all that stood between me and the Elite Four was the final gym leader, Claire. So right before the gym, I got Haunter to level 40 and evolved him into one of my favorite Pokemon, Gengar. Now it was time to face Claire. Her Lapras was tanky enough to survive a thunder from Gorichu, though I was able to make quick work of it with a throat chop next turn. I also was able to paralyze her Yon Mega with Gorichu, then swap into Golem next turn to land a super effective rock throw. And after tanking a Dragon Pulse, I was able to finish off her Yon Mega. Next was her Dragonair, which really wasn't good at withstanding a Blizzard from Typhlosion. But on the other hand, her Altaria did withstand Blizzard. But there's a reason why I decided to keep Quick Attack on Typhlosion. Now it was time for her final Pokemon, Kingdra. It landed a Hyper Beam on Gorichu, bringing her down into the yellow. And I was lucky enough to land yet another Thunder. I swear this thing does not miss. But that wasn't enough to do it in. But Kingdra needed to recharge after the last attack, pretty much giving me a free one-way pass to face the Elite Four. But first, I need to defeat my rival, Rival, who has achieved this rare thing called being a decent human being, which a lot of people don't seem to have. <clears throat> Sorry onto the battle. He starts out with Weavile, so my answer to that was a submission from Annihilate. Then he sends out a Crobat, which was weak to a small little move called Rock Slide. Except it decided to live on 1 HP, so it actually fell to yet another submission. Then we had a battle to see which Gengar was the better out of the two. And spoiler alert, it was mine because his Gengar used Curse and fainted. Now I will admit his Meganium did put up a tough fight with the move Dazzling Gleam. But for some reason Typhlosion can learn Fire Blast, which I I know sounds weird out loud, but given the context of this game, it's even weird that he can learn it in the first place. But it did come quite handy, so no complaints here. Then he had a Sligu. Not the regular one, but the Hisuian one that's weak to, you get it, Submission. Then for his final Pokemon, he sends out Magnezone. Another Pokemon weak to Submission. Nah, I'm just kidding. I took this one down with Earthquake. But you have to admit, I had you going, didn't I? Now with my rival defeated, it was time to face the Elite Four. First up was Will and his Psychic types. And I'm just gonna say it. I completely kicked his ass with Gorichu. Like, after I set up two nasty plots on his Zatu, I completely washed it away with Surf. Then I landed the Thunder on his goth girlfriend, taking her out. Then I used Throat Chop to knock out his Espeon. And then, Gorichu got over her confusion. That's right, this whole time, Zatu confused her. His Farigraph, guess what, fell after getting hit with two Throat Chops. And finally, his Slowbro fell to yet another two Throat Chops. For whatever reason, this fictional electric rodent Fakemon is the most powerful creature to exist. But anyway, now time to face Koga, the poison type trainer. I just spammed Earthquake. I'm being completely honest here, every single Pokemon he had went down to an Earthquake. Well, never mind because I just lied. Because his Crobat fell to a couple falling rocks, but I think you get the idea here. So now on to Bruno, which was the hardest of the Elite Four so far. He starts off with Heracross, which is now a fighting and bug type, or at least I think it is. Or has it always been fighting and bug? Anyway, I put it to sleep with Gengar, and I spammed Shadow Ball until it was down. Next was the Coomer Bait Pokemon Lopunny. Well, at least the Nihilip can test out Cross Chop now. Next was another one of my favorite Pokemon, Hitmontop. I sent out Blastoise to dazzle it with Dazzling Gleam, then it missed Triple Axle, so I was able to finish it off with a Psybeam. Then he sends out an Annihilate of his own, and after landing a Shadow Ball from Gengar, it shows you exactly why I haven't used Rage Fist once after evolving it. Then finally, Bruno's Ace comes out, Machamp. I sent in Blastoise to take it out with Dazzling Gleam, but it didn't work, and I got hit with a Rock Slide dealing half of my health. And after landing another Dazzling Gleam, the only thing I could hope to keep Blastoise alive was for Machamp champ to miss. Then my luck struck again and Machamp missed, but then Bruno healed Machamp back up. So yeah, so much for keeping Blastoids alive and yep, Never mind, I landed a critical hit and my luck is unbeatable. Now after that roller coaster ride of emotions, it was time to face the final Elite Four member, Lance. He starts out with a Gyarados, and if you were asleep during the Giovanni fight, I think you can guess what happened here. Next was this game's regional form of Charizard, who is now a rock and dragon type Pokemon. Weak to, you guessed it, Cross Chop. 
it just doesn't have the same ring to it as Submission did. But anyway, his Alteria goes down the same way Claire's went down. Well, except for the part where I needed Quick Attack. Now it was time for his Aerodactyl to come out, and it manages to outspeed Gorchu and land an Earthquake, dealing massive damage to my little guy. But you also need to remember something, that being the fact that Gorchu doesn't miss, and she will continue to never miss. Now all that was left was his Dragonite, and with it being 4 times weak to Ice, it was honestly kind of a letdown compared to Bruno's Machamp. Now, all that was left was to go all out against the champion, Karen. Karen starts off with another Pokemon four times weak to ice attacks, so it really wasn't much of a great start on her end. Then her Sylveon fell to my Blastoise, mainly because Blastoise was the only Pokemon I had with a super effective move against fairy types. Up next was her Basque Legion, that managed to survive a throat chop from Gorchu only to land a Hydro Pump that didn't even deal half health. Anyway, with one more hit, it was down for the count. And up next was Houndoom, who was weak to Cross Chop. Then she sent out Gudra, who was also weak to Cross Chop. Then for her final Pokemon, she sent out Tyranitar, who was not only weak to Cross Chop, but was four times weak to it. And now, with Karen defeated, I was crowned champion, and I've officially completed my Nuzlocke. I absolutely love this game, and I want to give another shout out to the creator, Pinatella XO, for this amazing game and for the beautiful sprites. If you guys want to see me continue this game into the Kanto region, just let me know in the comments. If you like challenge runs and JRPGs, or challenge runs in general, feel free to subscribe to the channel, it really helps it out. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and have a fantastic day!